morning, everyone. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. My sisters, we live in perilous times. That is evident even to people who have no faith whatsoever in the living God. And we who are Christians recognize the time and the season that we are in from what we observe in the world. So Christians are commanded to watch and pray. And when we do so, we can see what time it is. In this time, it's important for us to remember to stay sober and to abide in the word of God, to seek the Lord in prayer for guidance in all things, even more than we did in times past. Glory be to God. I want to talk to you today particularly about famine. You know, the, the people who rule this world and, and the fallen angels who rule this wor world, pardon me, have done a lot to interrupt the supply of food to the people. And of course, they have a genocidal agenda, and I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk to Christians about famine. One thing we can understand about famine is it's something that God has used throughout history. And so he might cause a famine to come in the land so that his people will move and go somewhere else. One instance of this, of course, is when Joseph was in Egypt and there was a famine in the land and he was able, by the grace and mercy of God, through the interpretation of a dream that was given to the Pharaoh, he was able to preserve the lives of the Israelites who came into Egypt for a season. Famine is something that has been used throughout the ages by God either to guide his servants or to punish evildoers as in the case of Ahab. That's one case of it. Another was in the case of Saul. And I'm just naming a couple of instances of both kinds of ways God uses famine. But we who are Christians have a different understanding than what the world does. And there's a lot of information and propaganda on the news to cause people to call, fall into fear so that they will seek to preserve their flesh. And we who are Christians, we rely on God for all things. And the God of heaven and earth, the God who made all things, has not changed. And as he provided angels' food, manna from heaven, for the Israelites in the wilderness. So it is that we can trust that God will provide for us if it need be so. So we need not compromise on the word of God or our testimony of faith or what we speak or what we believe simply because food is shortly about to become very controlled by the people who want to manipulate people into conforming to their evil plot. Glory be to God. I want to talk to you about famine from the perspective of a Christian. And we who are Christians believe the word of God. We do what it says, and thereby we have a good understanding. And when we are confronted with things in the world that might frighten us, that might cause us to worry, for example, my sisters, for what will happen to our children, we go into the word of God and we trust that the word of God is true. Glory be to God. So in Matthew 24, Jesus Christ spoke about famine happening in the end time. And we are in the final moments before our Lord returns to judge the world in righteousness. When Jesus Christ came the first time, he came to make peace between God and men, to provide a way for people to be saved from their sins. When he comes the second time, it will be to judge the world in righteousness and only the righteous will be preserved from the wrath to come. So we who are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, we who are in covenant with God, we who have received of his Holy Spirit, we walk in faith, we trust his word, and we continue in his word until the very end, whatever that end might be, and we do not fear. As God provided for his people in the wilderness, so it is that God will provide for us if 
needs be. But we want to keep some spiritual matters in mind as well. Let's go to Amos chapter 8 and verse 11. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. We who bear the seed, so the seed is the word of God. This is written in John chapter 8, verse 11, I believe. The seed is the word of God, and it is the seed that brings forth life. We who are Christians bear the seed. And there's a famine in the land right now for the word of God. So we who are Christians remember what our priorities are. We serve the everlasting king, and our hope is in the everlasting kingdom, the invisible world that mankind cannot see. See, they look at the carnal things the things of the flesh, and they seek to preserve their flesh. They might gather weapons. They might fight against the rulers of darkness of this world, which is folly, because nothing happens unless God allows it. They might seek to stockpile food and provisions. And, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with being prudent and having food on hand in case of an emergency. But we don't put our faith in food. We put our faith in the word of God, and there is a famine in the land in our time for the word of God. Let's go to Psalm 33. Glory be to God. Psalm 33. And let's read here. Starting in verse 18. Behold, The eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according as we hope in thee. So God's people are kept alive, alive, pardon me, alive in desert places, in times of famine, physically, but also we are kept alive in famine because we trust in and love the name of the Lord. Our soul waiteth for the Lord, We wait for Jesus. We serve the king, the king that the world does not know. And we provide unto people food, spiritual food, bread from heaven, the word of God. See, Jesus Christ was the word made flesh. The father, the invisible, immortal, and eternal God, put his word in his only begotten son. And thereby, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the one who was anointed with the Spirit of God, spoke his Father's word to the world, and so do we. We are his seed, and we do as he did. And so Jesus Christ spoke his Father's word 2,000 years ago, approximately. And then his apostles and disciples spoke the word that Jesus Christ put in their heart, and we who are descended from them in the spiritual realm, born of the word, we do the same thing. And we are kept alive in famine. So we have the truth. We have the light of the hope of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And we don't want to become preoccupied or frightened by things that are happening in judgment upon the entire world. See, the world has turned themselves over to wickedness. Some of them in ignorance, but most of them in willful sin. So they have decided they want life and they want truth and they want, they want to have power and glory without God. And this is something that always ends in failure. There's a famine in the land right now for the word of God. And he has promised to keep us alive in famine so that we can do as Joseph did. 
we can provide people with the food that they need in order to inherit everlasting life. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. And in Matthew chapter 4, what we're reading of is the temptation of Jesus Christ in the wilderness after he had fasted 40 days. Now, 40-day fast is a very long fast. To go without food or water in a desert place for 40 days is pretty much impossible in the eyes of the carnal. The carnal says that's impossible. But you see, when we're abiding in the presence of God and feeding upon his heavenly manna, that we are preserved, our life is preserved. We don't necessarily need to be putting things into our flesh to sustain us. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, when the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, so he's speaking the word of his Father here, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Glory be to God. Indeed, there is a coming famine in the world. It's something that's been deliberately brought about, and the controllers, the people who serve the devil, want to make it so that you have to agree with them in order to sustain your life. But we who are Christians, we know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Our Heavenly Father, who made heaven and earth, is the same God that he was in the beginning. He is well able to provide for us should we need it. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 and read a promise here that is verily one of the most beautiful things that a Christian can contemplate. And verily, there are many such things in the, in the Word of God, but this one is a particular gem and something that encourages me when in my flesh I might feel fear. Isaiah chapter 40. Let's start here. In verse 28, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faith. My sisters, our kingdom is not of this world. We don't fight to preserve our flesh. Rather, what we do is we serve Almighty God and trust in Him for all things because He who saved us from sin and death will, will preserve our everlasting life until the end. And this shell that we abide in, this fleshly shell, is but for a moment. It is soon to pass away. It will be broken open, corruption, corruption sh shall give way to incorruption. So we don't seek to preserve our flesh. Our life is hid with God and precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. So we don't seek to preserve our flesh because our hope is in an everlasting kingdom wherein we find everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen.